Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. This video is about us pouring a 40 by 28 foot garage slab. So if you're looking to pour a concrete slab for a garage, then, then this video is going to be a good one for you. Now what we're doing here is, is we're pouring concrete uh, that's a 3000 PSI. It's got microfiber mesh in it. It's got air entrainment in it because we live in a state where we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles and this garage isn't going to be heated so the air entrainment with little tiny microscopic air bubbles in the concrete help protect the concrete from uh, freezing and thawing and moisture getting inside it and popping and peeling the surface so we uh, usually have about four to five percent air entrainment in it and that gets put right in at the batch plant now I didn't do the prep on this slab uh, the guy I'm working for Jim did it and you'll see him a little bit later in the video but what the homeowner did was the homeowner hired uh, the excavator and the excavator came in here and he dug out about two feet of that dirt like you see in the background there those piles so he dug out about two feet of that and then he filled it in with this gravel you see right here this is about a, a one inch minus gravel I would say and they put it in about eight inches they compact it they put in another eight inches they compact it then they put the last eight inches in and compact it so it was a really really good hard compacted base and it was really good and flat and uh, it made putting the forms up really easy now Jim set the forms up so we didn't have to form this one we didn't have to put the wire in it or anything we just show up and pour so this one was pretty easy for us um, but we use Jim used two by six forms. This is about a six inch thick slab And as you can see we're pulling the wire up as we go And it's got microfiber in it for a second reinforcement And it's got a double row of rebar around that outside edge that's tied to the wire. There's Jim right there So this is the guy we're working for. He's the guy that set up the slab And he's the guy that put the wire in and all that so um, He hired me to get the floor poured so we got about 25 yards we're pouring here today that was a that was a 10 yard truck there so we dump it we like to dump it right out and get the truck out of there so the second truck can show right up and we also like to pour early in the morning this is like 6 45 a.m in the morning that way we get you know three trucks first round right out of the plant real quick and there's no waiting and uh, that just that's just how we like to pour is first thing in the morning every single day so when we pour a garage slab like this we're always getting our trucks right back to back to back if we have more than one now I would suggest you know doing that too if you're looking to pour a garage slab you know get it get it called in in advance whether it's a day in advance a week in advance or whatever it takes where, wherever you live you know, I, I usually got to put my orders in a week in advance in order to get them in the first round every day. So, you know, I tell the guy to put me down for two trucks, put me down for three trucks, whatever I need, you know, at least a week in advance. And then we adjust from there if it rains or something, then we got to adjust the schedule. But we like dumping that first truck right out. What makes it nice on a slab like this is when you set the outside form right to grade, then you can screed right off those outside forms and we use what's called a wet pad in the middle if you've seen any of my other videos I'll have I'll have another slab video linked at the end I'll also have a video linked at the end that shows you how to power trial a slab like this so this this is going to show you how to pour one and then I've got some really good ones about how to power trial also that'll teach you how to do that and if I mean if you want more advanced training if you want to learn about all the techniques that we do with concrete you know I have a I have a private training Academy called the concrete underground you can look at that down in the the description of the video you can click on that it'll take you to check that out there's all kinds of good training videos in there and you get access to me for private training and stuff like that so that's a really cool thing also for you guys I mean I've noticed that a big percentage of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel yet that watch my video so please go ahead down there and hit that little red subscribe button also hit the bell notification so you'll be notified whenever I come out with new videos I come out with two a week usually Mondays and Fridays trying to teach you guys you know my best practices for pouring and finishing concrete so go ahead down there and subscribe that'd be really cool 
So we're getting the second truck dumped out. You can see it takes us, you know, maybe by the time he gets mixed up, it might take us five or six minutes to empty out a truck like this. And, you know, the reason for that is because we do it every day. If you're not that experienced, you don't have to dump the whole truck out at once like we do. You could just go, go halfway, you know, and get that concrete screeded down and then finish out the rest of the truck and get that screeded down. You can see I'm climbing up that chute, scraping the chute down. Um, that's probably not the best idea to do, but, but we do it every day. So we just like to get all the concrete out of there so when they wash their chutes, they're not leaving a pile of concrete on the ground there outside by the road. So that the third truck is on the way. Um, well, what Luke's doing right now is he's shooting a pad in the middle, a wet pad, using the laser. That's right even with the top of the outside form. And then that allows me and Darren there to screed a nice flat level surface there in the concrete to go by. So Darren can go by the top of the form out there and I'm using that wet pad in the middle to go by. And we're just kick screeding using a, a 2x4 magnesium screed to get this level. This slab is perfectly level. There's no pitch or slope to it. Usually we'll use a, like a, the screed demon, like a vibrating screed on something like this. We just didn't throw it in a truck today for whatever reason. So we're, we're, we're doing it old school today, screeding by hand. How many of you guys screed concrete like this old school? Let me know down in the comments. And then how many of you use a vibra screed? And then let me know, also let me know if you've never screeded concrete like it. And if you haven't, if and you want to learn, like I said, the concrete underground is a place for that. But Luke's, Luke's puddling the concrete for us, getting it down nice and level. Here we are, we're just checking that middle with the screed. And then we'll get it bolt floated there. Kind of, there was a little bit of lag time between that second and third truck for whatever reason. You know, when they when they load out trucks in the morning, they have a big pile of trucks there. Like, I think they got about 10 concrete trucks at the plant we're using today. So, they're not just loading concrete for us, they're loading concrete for a bunch of other people too. So you can see the third truck showed up. We're getting the end of it poured out. You can see that rebar around that outside edge now. And, you know, I'm tugging up on it as we're pouring, getting concrete underneath all the wire, underneath that rebar. And once that aggregate and the concrete gets underneath that stuff, it doesn't go all the way back down to the bottom, even if we step on it like we are now. You know, the aggregate holds it up off the bottom somewhat. So it, it does work as a reinforcement in there. And basically what the wire and the rebar do in a slab like this is it just, if the concrete cracks or when it cracks, it helps hold it together nice and tight so those cracks don't spread apart or they don't lift one side higher than the other. That's basically what the reinforcement's for. Now we're gonna, we're gonna power trial this nice and smooth and then we'll saw some expansion joints in it. We'll probably saw three this 28 foot way and then one down the middle of the 40 foot way. So we'll break it up into like six squares. And we're trying to make it crack in those saw joints. So when it does expand and contract, it has a nice straight place to crack in. You can see how we pour that right out. Darren's shooting another pad in the middle with the laser for us to wet screed from. You can, you know, you could pound a stake in there with a nail through it or you could set up screed pipes or whatever you whatever you need to do to screed the concrete is, is fine. This is just the way we were taught. This is the way I was taught. You know, when I was, I think I was 15 or 16 years old, that was 40 years ago, I was taught to screed this way. So we just, we continue to do it whenever we have to. And when we can use the power screed, we'll use that too. But not a lot has changed in 40 years, I mean, I mean, the power, we didn't have the power screeds. We didn't have ride-on power trials when I started out back in about 1980, 81. Um, you know, there are some laser screeds out there now. But all in all, I mean, we're still doing things the way we did it a long time ago. And they still work good. I mean, the slabs come out like glass when we're done power trialing. You see how easy that is to screed when you when you really have the hang of it and you know what you're doing. 
when I pull my foot out, I kick some concrete back into that area where I pulled my foot out, and then we can just keep going without stopping. We got a little bit of high there, so we, we had to pull some out. And then we'll just get that all screeded down. So who out there is looking to pour a garage slab? I mean, I've got, I've also, if you check out in the show notes down below in the description, I do have a, a course on how to form, pour, and finish a concrete slab if that's what you're looking to do. So all, all my best practices and techniques are in there step by step. That would help you do that. That's well worth it. And then, again, all that training stuff is inside the concrete underground too, so you can find it in there. Just trying to help you guys out as much as I possibly can, trying to teach the next generation of concrete finishers. Plus, any of you uh, do-it-yourselfers, you homeowners who want to learn how to do this stuff, you know, that's what my training videos are for. So, any way I can help you guys learn what, what I know, that's what I'm doing here on YouTube. So, Darren's going to bull float that. We're just using a four-foot bull float. You can see there's no gaps under that. There's no humps. The edges, both when when both edges touch like that and leave a little line, you know that section's really nice and flat. And there's no there's no like gap under the bowl float. Then you know you've screeded it pretty level. When you go to power trial it too, you know there's a technique for that that will help level the slab even more. Make sure you've got a really nice level slab when you're done. So what Jim's doing now is. Jim is going to put a two-foot knee wall on top of this, so he's going around just putting in some rebar, and then he'll form up his, his knee wall and pour that and tie it all to that rebar. So he's going to put rebar everywhere around the slab, except where the door openings are. But that's it, guys. That's how to pour a basic 40-foot by 28-foot garage slab. If you like this video, you know, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Come on back.